Item number, SCP-6072, Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures, SCP-6072 currently remains uncontained. Its proper localization and anchoring using Scranton Reality Anchors in cooperation with Site-88 personnel due to their experience with humanoid anomalies is to be considered top priority for Site-120 personnel. All potential manifestation reports are to be immediately investigated. All Foundation personnel matching SCP-6072's manifestation criteria are to be placed within anti-ontokinetic spaces for the duration of their potential death, preventing the entity's manifestation. Description: SCP-6072 is a predatory entity with no consistent form nor appearance, emitting a constant output of level 4 TRE or Tartarian radiation energy and minor amounts of Akiva radiation, similar to that of a non-worshipped deity. Footnote 1. Similar in magnitude to the entity found within SCP-5572-1. Research regarding those similarities is ongoing. SCP-6072 displays predatory behavior, only targeting individuals exhibiting one or more of the following traits due to hunting ease. Age above 60. Severe loneliness. Life in relative poverty. Highly unstable life. Bad health condition, both physical and mental. Lack of many truly close relatives or friends to rely on for potential protection. Inability to maintain romantic relationships. All individuals near which SCP-6072 manifests are found dead within 2-5 to five minutes of exposure. In 100% of cases, the cause of death was determined to be a disease previously undiagnosed in an extreme state. The entity will never leave its prey until it's confirmed dead, always awaiting near it until the disease kills the subject, not infrequently checking for life signs on people it hunts. How SCP-6072 is able to manifest them within the organism of its prey in such an advanced state remains unknown. SCP-6072 possesses virtually unlimited teleportation and shape-shifting abilities, enabling it to manifest at any location in any form. Despite this, the entity utilizes this ability solely to manifest near its prey, which it hunts constantly. It has never been noted to appear anywhere else other than near individuals it wishes to eliminate. Most manifestations follow the formula of the entity taking the form of standard humans within the area it manifests in, frequently choosing the form of a close relative of the person it wishes to hunt. Upon detecting a potential victim, the entity will stop at nothing to achieve its goal. It has even been noted to bypass previously thought to be impenetrable anti-ontokinetic spaces. Current hypotheses hold the entity is a pain-consuming Tartarian, prolonging its life through the murder of others. Though this theory is backed up by examples of pre-modern era civilizations interacting with it, whether it's true remains unknown. Footnote 2. See Discovery and Historical Context. Discovery and Historical Context SCP-6072 had been known to the Foundation in one form or another ever since its founding in 1870. Initially suspected to be numerous other anomalies, following over 150 years of continued appearance, it had been fully researched and classified as SCP-6072. However, despite the Foundation only possessing data about it for 165 years, research has revealed numerous records taken from all around the world throughout numerous centuries regarding the world's cultures and their interactions with the entity. The following is a select few of the most important ones. Footnote 3. For a full list of SCP-6072 manifestations throughout history, request access to Site-120's General Riza Chairman James Moore. Time frame of manifestations. Unknown, most likely 1800 to 1700 BC. Location of manifestations. Egypt. Manifestation details. Due to the extremely poor state of most of society at the time, SCP-6072 was able to claim extreme amounts of victims. Directly responsible for the belief in Reshef, a god of disease spawning wherever he came. Time frame of manifestations. Unknown most likely 400 to 300 BC. Location of Manifestations Mesopotamia Manifestation Details 
Due to the highly politically unstable time frame of its manifestation, SCP-6072 was able to exploit it to hunt numerous victims before being noticed. Inspired the myth of Era, a god of war and disease, coming for the weak to take them to the kingdom of the dead. Time frame of manifestations Unknown, most likely 400 to 700 AD. Location of manifestations Central and Eastern Europe. Manifestation details SCP 6072's numerous manifestations most likely inspired the Masurian myth of white peoples, a gnome like race of demons responsible for human diseases, bringing them upon the weak and the old. Time frame of manifestations The Edo period, 1603 1867. Location of manifestations Japan. Manifestation details Despite the relative peace and economical stability of the era, SCP-6072 was still noted to manifest due to the chaos and instability of the era directly before it, causing many poor regions, though the manifestations were visibly less and less frequent as the era went on. Most likely inspired the Japanese myth of the Shinigami, death gods bringing weak humans death, carrying their souls to the afterlife. Time frame of manifestations 1890 to 1923 Location of manifestations Siberia Manifestation details Due to the highly unstable health and physical wealth of the Ket people in that region caused by numerous attempts at Russification by the Russian authorities of the time, SCP-6072 was able to hunt much more frequently within the area. Further research regarding the culture suggests the entity was responsible for the myth of the Kasadam goddess, a deity responsible for cursing humans with diseases and devouring their souls afterwards. Addendum 6072-2 The following log is the only available recording of SCP-6072 interacting with any of its victims, as well as the only manifestation event which the Foundation was able to witness. Access Log 9-12-2035-1 Date, September 12th, 2035 Forward. The following video is taken from one of the cameras within Vanguard Research and Preservation Site 120's medical ward. At that time, Dr. Ethan McCarthy Jr. Footnote 4. One of the five members of Site 120's Director Council, last member of the McCarthy family, a multi-generational family long serving the Foundation. All other members either lost in action or dead due to age. Was being hospitalized due to a lung health problem discovered the day prior. Begin Log SCP-6072 manifests outside the medical room, taking the form of Dr. McCarthy. Footnote 5 Dr. McCarthy Jr.'s father, who was dead since March 28, 1984. From personal testimonies, it's been deduced that the man was Dr. McCarthy Jr.'s only person he considered close to himself. The doctor is laying in a medical bed, sleeping. SCP-6072 enters the room. The glass doors behind it shut, and their closing sound wakes up the doctor who blinks twice and puts on his glasses, located at the nightstand. He notices SCP-6072 and gets visibly uneased. SCP-6072 doesn't respond, coming closer to the doctor's bed. It pulls a chair from one of the nearby tables and sits near the doctor, who starts to cry. Is... <coughs> is... is that... you know... SCP-6072 nods. At that time, personnel stationed outside the ward notice the entity within and start to attempt to open the doors. Upon failing to do so, they start to notify security, banging at the glass walls for the doctor to notice the entity. He doesn't respond, nor notice them. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. As tears go down the doctor's face, the entity comes closer and touches his face with its hand. Outside the room, site security appear, trying to enter the room via force. They are unsuccessful even upon what should normally break both the glass walls and the door. Neither the doctor nor the entity react in any way to them. I, uh, I know I told you. Uh, I wouldn't s smoke. <coughs> I'm so sorry. SCP-6072 touches the doctor's hand in a calm expression. The other starts to violently cough, trying to hide it with his arm. 
The entity smiles slightly and touches his hand with its other hand. The coughing stops for a second. I didn't know how to deal with your, your and David's death. I'm so sorry. McCarthy Jr. starts to cry profusely again, stopping all speech. The doctor's phone located on the nightstand starts to ring with an emergency tone. He doesn't notice it. He again starts to cough, this time visibly coughing blood. Shh, don't worry. It's fine. I'm here, and I'm proud of you. Don't worry at all. I don't want to go, Dad. I don't want to... I... I'm not ready to... I don't want to... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry for, for everything. I, I don't want to go, Dad. I, I, I don't... The entity shushes him, giving the doctor a hug. They sit in that position for two minutes, with McCarthy Jr. sobbing violently. The entity shushes him again. I, I... Shh. Mom and David are proud of you, too. Don't worry. We're here for you. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Shh. It's fine. The entity hugs the doctor again. Upon finishing the gesture, McCarthy Jr. lays down on his bed. I, I, I think I... The doctor closes his eyes. He no longer expresses sadness nor pain. I'm proud of you. SCP-6072 demanifests. Though Dr. McCarthy Jr. ceases all movement, an expression of happiness can be seen on his face. End log. Closing Statement Following SCP-6072's demanifestation, Dr. McCarthy Jr. was found dead at the age of 85 within the hospital ward. Post-mortem analysis revealed it was caused by a previously undiagnosed lung cancer. The disease was entirely unanomalous, believed, following further research, to have been within Dr. McCarthy Jr. for at least three prior years, mainly due to his long-lasting smoking addiction and poor work ethic. Following further research, it was discovered that SCP-6072 does not cause any of the diseases found within its victims, not being responsible for their deaths. The TER previously thought to be emitted from it was, in actuality, simply the byproduct of experiencing human deaths for a prolonged period of time. Further investigation, potential reclassification, and file rewrite of SCP-6072 remains pending. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to level 4 patrons Lesby Friends, Alexis the Great, Everborn, and Joe Light. And a huge shout out to level 5 patron Doomsday LLC Prince and Design, and level 6 patron Totally Not a Femboy. If you would like to see your name at the end of my videos, see my videos early, and get some other cool perks, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.